word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. Alleluia. scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced the crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen, then, to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sold. This is the gospel of the Lord. Continue our worship by singing our sermon hymn today that's in 324.
to do immeasurably more than we could ask or even imagine. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God's grace, mercy, and peace are with all of you. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, our Savior, an American Indian tale tells the story of an aged chief who was speaking to a group of young braves about that struggle within us. It's like two dogs fighting, he said. The one dog is a, a good dog who wants to do what's right. The other, the bad dog, who wants to do what's wrong. Sometimes the good dog is stronger and winning the battle. Sometimes the bad dog is stronger and winning the battle. One of the braves spoke up and asked, well, which one will win in the end? The wise chief replied, the one that you feed. So which dog are you feeding? You know, last week in our sermon, we talked quite a bit about this spiritual struggle that takes place inside of us. That, that battle between the sinful nature that we were born with and that we inherited from our parents who is hostile to God and rebels against Him. And the new self, which was created by the Holy Spirit, who wants to please God and do what honors Him. We talked about how those natures are, are opposite and antagonistic, each one bent on destroying the others. You know the battle? We want to do good, but don't always carry that out. We have the desire to live how God wants and, and follow after Him, but don't always do it. We want to live a life that, that pleases our Father in Heaven and are confused when we falter in the face of trouble. We get dumbfounded when suddenly we're weak and, and fall to temptation. We get scared when doubts start to creep in for our faith and we start to question right or wrong. We, we want to hold tightly in rocky times. We want to stand strong in times of trouble, but don't always do so. That's the struggle with you. And last week, as we talked about that, we focused our attention on the peace and the forgiveness that Jesus brings to when we are weary and, and burdened in our sin. But we still stand in that peace. This week, we want to take a look at how that new self can begin to display itself more and more. How we can become stronger. And we can more and more in our life produce the fruits of faith, fruits that please our God and honor Him as His people. And Jesus tells us really the simple way to do that. Make sure you feed the right dog. Rather than feeding your sinful nature, the junk food of this world's philosophies and and, and, and ideas, we help our new self by eating the spiritual food that God offers us. By means of a parable, Jesus helps us to strengthen our new man, by encouraging us to continue casting the seed of his word into our hearts so that it takes root and produces those fruits that please God. So to study this text today, we want to do it by asking that question, which dog are you feeding? Now really to understand the parable, we first have to make sure we understand what God's kingdom is. God's kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. It's His dominion, His ruling activity in the hearts of His people. God rules in His people's hearts with His word. That's really the point of this entire parable. God brings His kingdom into our heart and he continues and strengthens that kingdom in our heart as he shares that precious gospel message, the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. You've heard me speak ad, ad nauseum about the importance of being involved in a regular Bible study. You've heard me encourage the importance of regular regularly being at worship to hear God's Word and worship your Savior. You've heard me encourage daily reading your Bible. And this parable really emphasizes why all of that is so important. 
Because it's by casting his seed into our hearts that God produces the fruits that please him. So for us to produce those fruits that, that we want to live to, to, to live as God's people, we want to follow God's direction and keep casting his word into our hearts. Well, this parable talks about the different types of soil that that seed of his word lands on. In other words, it talks about some of the different responses to hearing God's word. The first is the, 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 the hard soil where the seed is cast, but the, the birds come and quickly eat those seeds away. Now, we might be tempted at first to assume that this really isn't talking to us, has no application to us, because we're here hearing God's word today. Most often we would think of this of being applied to the person who we share God's word with, who rejects that invitation and chooses to live their life under the ignorance and influence of the, their lusts and desires. And certainly that person is included. But there's warning for us here too. This also speaks to the person who hears God's word, but doesn't let it sink in. And there's a difference between hearing and, and listening. This would speak to the person who goes to church because that's what we do, but doesn't seek to understand or grasp what God is sharing. It speaks to the person who hears God's words of comfort during a trial or difficulty, but don't really believe or, or trust in them. Speaks to a person who might want to pick and choose what part of God's word they want to believe and follow and which parts they don't. It would speak to hearing what I share with you from God's word on, on issues that, that, that God addresses specifically with us and letting it go in one ear and not the other. Right? Like what God says about regular Bible study and what God says about living together before marriage. What God says about loving one another. Or looking out for each other's good in all things. What God says about gossip. Or about taking people's words and actions in the kindest possible way. What God says about using our time and our talents and our treasures to serve Him and serve others. It's important that we ask ourselves, are we feeding our soul? with the nourishment that God provides in His Word, or are we feeding our other nature with the ideas and philosophies of this world? It's important to ask, which dog are you feeding? The second type of soil would be someone who hears God's Word, who believes it, and who is very enthusiastic about being a member of God's kingdom. But that enthusiasm is based only on emotion, kind of like a person who would would make a New Year's resolution to, to go to the gym and get fit. And they're very gung-ho about it until the reality sets in of getting to the gym every day. and Even more so, the pain and difficulty that comes from working out regularly, and by February, they've given up that goal. It, it really speaks to a person that has the wrong expectation. This would be a person who, who expects the Christian faith to bring less trials and troubles in their life than what other people have to face, or who look to Christianity as a, a way to prosperity and success, good health and uninterrupted happiness. And that may be fine while all of that's happening. But when reality strikes and trouble comes the way that it will, they're rocked to the core and very easily give up their faith because they haven't allowed the roots to grow very deep. You know, it's amazing how many people are just content with doing the bare minimum required for them to be God's people. They're very content to have a weak and an immature faith that has very shallow roots. It doesn't grow very strong. That's fine. Well, things are going well. But when the troubles and and trials come that are very unexpected to them. They very easily give up that faith. They might be feeding the right dog, but they're not feeding it very much. It's good to ask, which dog are you feeding? 
The third type of soil is one who longs for the salvation that Jesus offers, but still wants to hold on to the worldly spirit. In other words, someone who wants to have one foot in each camp. Oh, they're feeding the right dog, but they're also feeding the wrong dog, too. And so while their faith grows, so also the thorns and weeds of this world's philosophies and ideas grow too. This would be a person who would be tempted to be too concerned about materialistic things. Someone who, who falls for the worries of life and the deceitfulness of wealth. Someone who doesn't trust God to provide for bodily needs. Someone who would pin their hopes on what money can accomplish and think they could worship both God and man and money at the same time and be just fine. You would speak to one who would falsely assume that we can go it alone in faith and, and do it all by ourselves. And so in the end, they end up feeding both dogs. And what happens all too often is the wrong dog takes over and beats the, wrong, the right dog into submission. It's important for us to ask, which dog are you feeding? See, the reality is all three of these soils have application into our lives. We can be that hard ground, at times rejecting the things which God says to us in His Word. We can have shallow roots. <clears throat> Dabbling in Christianity the way that, that many people do. Not wanting to get too caught up in it, but just enough to feel good about ourselves. And certainly we know about all the worries of life and the deceitfulness that wealth can bring. We allow ourselves to, to listen to it and follow after the world's ideas and philosophies, thinking that we're progressing as people only to find out all we're doing is feeding the wrong dog. Well, as God casts this word into our heart today, we're left only really to bow before him in confession of our shortcomings and our sins. How stubborn we can be, at times rejecting God's word. What arrogance and pride we show in wanting to go it alone, thinking we don't need to be continually feeding our faith. What laziness and ap apathy we can show in the care we have for our soul. What ignorance in following this world's ideas and philosophies. All we can do is lay ourselves bare before our God and say, God, I have sinned. And I deserve only your eternal punishment because of it. And thankfully, God keeps casting his word into our heart making sure that we feed the right dog by directing us to Jesus, our Savior. There's where we see God's love for us. There's where we see God rescuing us and giving us the help we so desperately needed. When you and I were dead in our sins and separated from God because of it, He sent Jesus to be our Savior. And Jesus willingly lived perfectly in our place and died for our sins and rose from the grave to bring us forgiveness. And God not only had all of that happen, He sent the Holy Spirit to plant that seed of faith in our heart to know Jesus as our Savior. Rejoice. God brought His kingdom into your heart so that you can see in Jesus sin paid for and forgiven. God gives you the certainty of eternal life. And His encouragement is continue casting that seed. And the water, the seed that has been planted, so that seed can go stronger and stronger. That we can stand even more firm as we live our lives to the glory of God in heaven. This is how God produces the fruits of faith that He wants in our lives. It's those promises of God that He shares with us in our Word that help us to, to stand firm when the winds of trouble come blowing through our life. It's being reminded about God's love for us, which He shares with the Word that help us stand firm when trials come our way. It's God's guidance and the strength He provides for us in His Word that help us to 
to withstand the temptation. See, friends, we are not sinners who are struggling somehow to attain sainthood. In Jesus, we are saints who struggle with sin while we're still here on this earth. Which reminds us of how important it is that we keep feeding the right dog. I pray God lead all of us to be ever more diligent in caring for our soul and casting the seed of God's word continually into your hearts. I pray that you, you make that your goal to, to learn more of your Savior and understand his love better as you read his word. I pray that you see worship and Bible study is opportunity God places before you regularly to care and feed for your soul. And I pray that we trust God will produce an abundant crop in our lives and bring his blessings as we continue casting the seed of his word into our hearts. As God's people, it's good for us to keep asking that evaluation question. Which dog am I feeding? Amen. Please stand.